Hello my dear Aliholics, Yumi DJ is a budget smartphone manufacturer and G1 is their latest model. This model will set you back $98 and here is what you can expect if you decide to buy this phone. This will be a pretty detailed video and if there is a certain part of the phone that you are interested in, I've added timestamps. But before we start though, here are some cool lights that I wanted to show off to you. This little projector costs $3, which I think is a steal because they look really cool. The quality of the image that it projects is pretty impressive, considering the price and the Mickey Mouse technology. I got a few of the image cards, my favorite is with Mount Fuji. The size of the projection is quite big, and it depends on how dark the room is with pitch black brightness or the lack of thereof, I was able to get it to approximately 2 by 2 meters. I also like the moon, Saturn one is kinda cool, the bridge, I'm not sure what it is, but there is something cool about it. This one's kinda meh, um, but whatever, it was a freebie. I also got this galaxy and I'm not even sure what this is, but I like it. So I have two different projectors, one is slightly bigger than the other and the cards look like this. Just like in real life, the small ones fit into the bigger one, but the bigger ones don't fit the small one. I'll put the product link in the video description and I'll make a separate video of the cool lighting that I recently received. Anyway, back to Yumi DJ G1. I got mine from Amazon as a part of the tester program, under which they refunded me $50 upon leaving the review. I will leave links to both Amazon and AliExpress listings in the video description, and it probably won't be a surprise, but the Amazon listing is more expensive, although it will likely arrive sooner. The phone came in this bright yellow box. The Ducky and the Gnome will show you the specs from the box. Post the video on the next frame if you want to see the full thing, but the highlights are quad-core A53 processor, Android 12 pre-installed, 5150 mAh battery, 6.5 inch display, 13 megapixel rear facing camera and a 5 megapixel front, 2 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of internal memory which is not expandable. 6 gigs of the eternal memory are taken by the system and CPP spyware apps, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Inside the box we have the USB Type-C cable with the SIM card tool, a charging block and the shortest manual I've ever seen and, well, the phone. Let's take a closer look at the phone. The front facing camera is embedded into the display and we do not have any physical buttons on the front. The most striking part about this phone, in my opinion, is the legally safe knockoff of the popular phone look of the rear camera and the beyond dream slattering on the side. Here is the side view and the top and bottom view. The phone comes with the USB-C charging data port and an aux input on top. What I found kinda cool is the fact that the phone came with the screen protector pre-applied, which was surprising given the low price of the device. The display is nothing to write home about, the body to display ratio is pretty good, and the brightness is acceptable, though it does feel like a budget device. The colors aren't, please excuse the redundancy, as colorful compared to the higher-end phones. The speaker is facing the bottom. Size and dimension wise, it's very close to my Galaxy S20 FE, though the frame sticks out a little bit more. Now, when it comes to performance, this is where my problem with this device is. It feels sluggish, I'm not the most impatient person and I take the price into the account, but the apps take a considerable amount of time to open and it really doesn't like when you run a few of them at the same time. When I checked the device info app, it looked like nearly half of all RAM was being used by that app and the Android running in the background. Surprisingly though, the games weren't lagging and I was able to play some Dune buggy racing game and of course Candy Crush because I am secretly a 45 year old housewife. The phone has a gyro sensor so you can play games where you turn the phone to control cars for example and you can also use it for VR videos. I was able to watch videos on TikTok without any lag either, though I have to note that the first second of the video feels a little bit freezy. And now let's take some time exploring the camera functionality that I've spent too much time on filming. The, th the first thing that becomes very apparent is that the phone does not have image stabilization, so the footage, just like an average American police fresh out of the academy, comes out pretty unstable. But as long as I didn't walk, stood still and only moved my torso side to side, the shakiness was not a problem and the footage came out pretty decent. The transition between low light and medium to high light was pretty decent as well. 
I added these clips side by side to show that the display does an okay job keeping the colors true to real life. Um, what you see is what you get kind of deal. Surprisingly, the selfie camera isn't as bad as I thought it would be either. The sharpness is quite phenomenal, but because of the fact that it doesn't have any stabilization whatsoever, the footage comes out a bit shaky if you film it while walking. I mean, overall it's pretty decent um, if you film things while not walking. Autofocus during the highlight environments works pretty good too. Just because I could, I added comparisons of the both front and the rear camera on this camera with my Galaxy S20. Um, unsurprisingly, the quality of the Samsung is superior, but this Samsung also costs like five times the UMTG price. Here are some pictures that I took during our last trip to Botanical Beach on Vancouver Island. The tide pools were really fun to explore, and we also made it to a secret waterfall on Sombrio Beach, the directions to which were sketchy at best. Overall, do I think this phone is worth the money? I really do. You'd uh, see the same specs on phones over $500 in 2017. The camera is alright, and even though the processor can't handle too many processes at once and the phone feels laggy, it is definitely usable. Would I use it as my main device? No, not really. At this point of my life, I'd rather spend a little more and get a second-hand phone with better specs, which is what I did. I still think that it's a very decent option for a backup phone. I also received these Bluetooth earphones from UMDG and boy am I impressed with them. The quality of the build, the quality of the sound, the noise cancellation, you know, really everything. I really truly think that these are fantastic and possibly the best wireless earphones that I've ever tried. But that's for another video. Toodles!